Hannah, in order to study for my Hamlet test, and also in order to educate you on this lovely play in case you read it next year in English, I am going to now attempt to explain to you all of Hamlet. Here we go. So to start with, the plot. There's this guy, Hamlet. He's a prince of Denmark, and he's not doing too good. Hamlet's dad, the king, recently died. And, you know, it's been about two months and his mom already remarried to her brother-in-law. But no one at the court is saying anything. Hamlet seems to be the only one who gets that this is weird. Horatio, Hamlet's loyal friend, learns that the ghost of Hamlet's father has been wandering around the castle. So Horatio's like, hey Hamlet, you might want to check this out. So Hamlet goes to see the ghost, and the ghost talks to him and tells him that, oh, guess what? He was killed by Claudius. So the ghost asks Hamlet to revenge his death by killing Claudius. And Hamlet's like, hells yeah, I'll do that. Then Hamlet proceeds to spend the rest of the play not doing that. He comes up with lots of reasons, or excuses, some might call them, for not killing Claudius. And he feels very torn up about the fact that he has yet to kill Claudius and revenge his father's death. Also, he acts like he's crazy in order to keep people off track. This way, everyone thinks he's insane and no one knows that he's actually planning on killing the king. Long story short, in the end, I have a paper to remind me, Hamlet kills Claudius, Ophelia, Hamlet's girlfriend, kills herself, Hamlet and Laertes, Ophelia's brother, kill each other, Claudius accidentally kills Gertrude, Hamlet, very much not accidentally, kills Claudius, and basically Horatio's the only one left alive to tell the story to this guy, Fortinbra, who comes in to take over the throne. Pretty much everyone dies. That's why this is a tragedy. Now the plot of Hamlet's interesting, and the language is obviously amazing because it's Shakespeare, but in my opinion the reason why this play is so amazing is because of how much is left up to the audience to decide. For example, Ophelia's death. Suicide? Accident? Or murder? The answer? It's up for debate. Ophelia and Hamlet. Were they doing the nasty? I don't know. Polonius. A fool? Or actually kind of clever? I promise you when you read Hamlet, you're going to think Polonius is a fool. But go back and look at his lines, because actually, you could argue it the other way. Hamlet. Actually crazy? Or just pretending. I mean, he tells Horatio at the beginning he's going to put an antic disposition on, but then he starts hallucinating ghosts. So I don't know. Hamlet. Windy little bitch? Or just a good guy in a really bad situation? A lot of people I know hate this play because Hamlet annoys the crap out of them. But I actually really like Hamlet. I think he's a cool dude. He's definitely smart. No one can argue that. He's really well educated, and he's also just very clever. And he's got this really dry sense of humor that, being a really sarcastic person, I like. For example, when he's insulting his mom, and his mom says, Hamlet, thou hast thy father much offended. He says, Mother, you have my father much offended. And yeah, it's super annoying how Hamlet keeps saying he's going to kill Claudius and then doesn't kill Claudius. But Hamlet's just not a natural killer. He's just been put in this really difficult situation by his dead dad. Wait, new location and Katie's eyes suddenly look like raccoon eyes? What? My mom came home, Hannah, and I started talking to her about my day, and then about my week, and then about my life, and the next thing I knew I was having a mental breakdown. Yay. So we're not going to think about that. We're going to think about Hamlet. Because even if I hate English class right now, I really like Hamlet. So some people might say Hamlet's annoying because of how much he complains, but actually, I think he's got some really reasonable things to complain about. I mean, his dad died, and then his mom married his uncle. And the worst part is, other than Horatio, he has no one to trust or talk to about this. Even his girlfriend Ophelia betrays him. I mean, he says, But break, my heart, for I must hold my tongue. Which is just so sad, because he can't even tell anyone except for the audience about this. And the reason he's considering killing himself is because, to him, what's the point of living anymore? He says, Oh God, God, how weary, stale, flat, and unprofitable seem to me all the uses of this world. Which, considering the fact that there's kind of no way out of his situation, makes sense that he feels like this. And then the only way out becomes killing his uncle, but he's not a natural killer. Poor Hamlet. Okay, another subject that's up for interpretation, Gertrude. Is she just dumb and goes along with what people tell her to do? Possibly. I mean, you can see it as Gertrude constantly doing what Claudius tells her to do, at the end accidentally dying by drinking some goblet, and also not listening to Hamlet when he tells her the truth. But you could also see it as Gertrude marrying Claudius just so that she could keep her position as queen and keep some power. And then as her being actually pretty intelligent, she denies the truth at first because it's too hard to face, but then she does listen to Hamlet when he tells her the truth, and she drinks the goblet to save Hamlet. 
or, and this is my personal favorite interpretation, even though it's the one with the least textual evidence, you could see Gertrude as the master behind it all. Think about this. Her and Claudius could have had an affair way before King Hamlet was killed. She could have actually been in with Claudius on killing Hamlet. Then, when Ophelia turned insane, but in her insanity started to blame the right people for being guilty, Gertrude could have killed Ophelia. I mean, she does know a lot about how she dies. Any way you look at it, Gertrude's a very interesting character, and her relationship with her son is probably what is the most interesting about her. Her and Hamlet are clearly close. When people are trying to figure out what's making Hamlet crazy, she's the only one that gets it right. She says, I doubt it is no other but the maid, his father's death and our or, or hasty marriage. I mean, she admits the marriage is or hasty, and she knows her son well enough to know that that's what's really upsetting him. But, while her and Hamlet are close, and Hamlet, you know, loves her for being his mom, he hates her actions. He can't stand the fact that she's with Claudius now. I mean, he compares her relationship to doing it with a pig. And he's really angry with his mother. I mean, even more angry than he is at Claudius, he's angry with his mother. One of my favorite parts is when Hamlet first promises the ghost that he'll kill Claudius, because he says, And thy commandment alone shall live within the book and volume of my brain, unmixed with baser matter. Which basically means, all I'm going to think about is killing Claudius, I'm not going to think about anything else. But then right after saying this, he says, Yes, by heaven. Oh, most pernicious woman! Right after promising he's not going to think about anything else, he's immediately on to Gertrude, thinking about her, because she's the one that's really bugging him. Some other things to think about while reading Hamlet. When Ophelia is crazy and she gives out her flowers to everyone, there's no stage direction, because there's rarely stage direction in Shakespeare plays. So, who is she giving the flowers to? It does matter. Does Hamlet have an Oedipal complex? Rose and Crance and Guildenstern. What is the point of them? It's important to pay attention to the fact that Fortinbras, Hamlet, and Laertes all act as foils for each other, and to realize what the differences between them mean. What's the point of the play within a play? Now, whenever you're answering any of the questions that I brought up here, you need to find evidence in the text. I'm saying that Hamlet is very open to interpretation, and it is, but there are some limits. For example, can you say that all of Hamlet takes place in space? No. Now some angry YouTubers are probably going to link me to some website on Hamlet is in space, here's the evidence. But come on guys, you need to actually have text evidence for everything you're proving. And the text is so beautiful, Hannah. It is funny, and it is heartbreaking, and it is beautiful. So you should read this, even if you don't end up reading it for school. If you want to see it, my favorite movie of Hamlet is the David Tennant version. Okay, one last important thing about Hamlet. Famous lines! There are so many famous lines in Hamlet. And if your teacher ends up being like my teacher, she'll want you to know these for the test. So first, to be or not to be. Denmark's the prison. To thine own self be true. I must be cruel only to be kind. The play's the thing, where it all catch the conscience of the king. The lady doth protest too much, methinks. More matter with less art. There are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, that can be dreamed of in your philosophy. That's my senior quote. Well, Hannah, that was my attempt to cover all of Hamlet. Please read the play, because it's great. I hope this helped you. I love you. And I will see you on Saturday. I'm going for the gothic look.